So good morning. So you are probably on your way to work right now, or perhaps maybe you are tucked in bed and you're thinking, you know what, today I want to fix my anxiety problems. Well, you are certainly in the right place. I am that dating anxiety guy, Dan. And yes, I have realized I don't need to be saying my my full name every single time I uh, I do one of these uh, these intros. But today, I want to go over a particular piece of advice and you've probably noticed that I am actually back in my kitchen. Well, the last time that I I did a video um, in my kitchen, I was talking about the uh, the symptoms that you get anxiety-wise when you are actually speaking to women. And this video is a somewhat continuation on that premise where I want to actually talk about the effects that the anxiety has on you when you're in your interaction. So kind of think of it as like level one was talking about the uh, the symptoms that you get and this is going to be level two. So just before we get into the content, let's just do a recap on what anxiety is. So anxiety happens when cortisol is released in the body during that fight or flight response And that would typically happen if you're going to go over and talk to a stranger in a very unpredictable kind of moment. So whether you're doing a cold approach or uh, that's going to be on the street, maybe in a coffee shop, in a library, maybe even a, a networking event or in a bar or speed dating even you're going to experience the symptoms of anxiety, especially if it's in an environment or you're acting on something that you've never really truly experienced before and you just don't quite know the outcome on. And that's going to just typically happen with any new person that you meet because you just don't know how any new person is going to react. One of the first things then that you're likely to experience is not being able to think clearly. You're not going to be able to recall your thoughts, memories, questions that you've got, opinions that you've got. It can be very difficult then to create a conversation because those neurons just aren't firing. And I think what typically happens for men, and I'm certainly guilty of this myself as well, is that you can create this like perpetuating cycle of stress that just can make the situation worse. And there's an element of self-hypnosis that can play out here where the more you are trying to fight this struggle of your uh, of not being able to ask questions and not you can't think of what to say, then the worse you will actually make it. But all you can do really in those moments as the alternative, which is easier said than done, is to try and just remind yourself, look, the less stressed I am, the more control that I can have over my bodily symptoms of anxiety, then the less cortisol I'm going to have in my body. And that's going to remove the issue that I've got of being not being able to ask, you know, questions or have a conversation. Like think about the difference of when you're talking to maybe your best friend or a family member. It should be pretty easy, right, to be able to have a conversation. And that happens because you're not stressed about it. You don't care about what you're going to say. You don't hold back. You're not restricting yourself. You're just speaking your truth and it just comes out. But with a stranger, because of that doubt, that unpredictability, and because you are it may be you're also slightly outcome dependent, like you want to be able to get a phone number from that person, then you do feel that limitation. And of course, that anxiety is also going to create that too. So just try to, uh, you know, take deep breaths. Just try and remember that if you can calm yourself down, whatever the exercises or techniques that it is that you particularly use, then just try and relax yourself. And the more you can keep those symptoms at bay, then yeah, the the more you're going to ease into that conversation and you'll find that that initial hurdle will only be at the start of the conversation and the rest should hopefully go smoothly. But certainly through practicing 
uh, cold approach or just even just talking to strangers in general, then you can become more and more comfortable with even just that starting point of a conversation. And anxiety will never completely go away. That, that much is true. In fact, it's great or it's good that anxiety is there, but just having more control over it from the start can make it certainly easier to um, have a conversation with someone and also just make a really great first impression as well. But this kind of then leads into my second point, which is that it doesn't allow you really to be your true self. It doesn't allow you to be charismatic because when you've got those, uh, again, those anxiety symptoms controlling your, your behavior, then it can be very difficult to kind of, you know, be really sort of like charming and smooth and bringing your humor and creativity into a conversation. And it's those elements or those things, that is what can make someone really attractive. Now, the other day, or in fact, I think yesterday, actually, I'd, I'd made a video talking about that particular thing. Uh, when you're going out and if you've got flaws that you can identify with, uh, or definitely, you know, at the start of your um, your cold approach journey with developing your skills, you know, if you're struggling to start a conversation with someone, as in you are absolutely petrified to just make that initial uh, step or, or steps to go over and talk to them, then just work on that first. Get confident with that and then work on the next step which could be giving compliments, asking for directions, whatever. Then get really confident with that and then move on to the next step, which could then be having conversations, which just makes that part of the, uh, the interaction even easier. If you've been able to build up quite strongly those first bits, then getting to the point of a conversation where you've managed to keep your anxiety more at bay because you now aren't so scared to go and talk to strangers. Again, that's gonna make it even easier for you to bring out that charismatic side in you. Whereas if you've got a guy who isn't very good at going over to go and talk to strangers, is absolutely petrified to go and ask for directions or give a compliment, then it's gonna be near impossible realistically, or it's gonna be an even bigger hurdle for him to kind of climb over if he's gonna go straight into trying to have conversations with strangers. So you have to kind of learn to walk before you can run. Get used to uh, being able to um, just walk over to a stranger first to then be able to get to that stage of um, being comfortable with having a conversation. And when you're able to then really bring out your, uh, your charisma, your charm, and have very deep and meaningful conversations, as well as very uh, humorous ones as well, you'll find that that's where you will get the most results and build the most attraction with people as well. Because you don't really get to see that person when they are being really introverted or when they do struggle with, you know, with just speaking and saying anything. And they can become very self-conscious. And I, I think I've, even over the years, uh, especially in fact, I think in my early days, when I was introduced to the dating industry. I mean, I was a very shy and introverted guy. And, you know, going, just the thought of going over and talking to a pretty woman was scary, to say the least. You know, I was, what's the matter? Got my cat talking to me. Um, yeah, I would have found it incredibly stressful. And so, you know, to then think about like, oh, well, you know, if I can't go and talk to a person, what's the point in even thinking about trying to get a phone number at that point? Just focusing on those those smaller steps first. So when you can handle the symptom, symptoms of anxiety, then that is when you're gonna be able to get more comfortable in your conversations and you're gonna bring out that much more charismatic and charming side to you. And lastly, it can be very difficult to learn new things. 
So what do I mean by that? So imagine you've got a guy who has gone to a dating coach. He's very new to the idea of developing his social skills via doing cold approach. And the the guy has just started approaching. He's struggling with the anxiety symptoms and the coach is giving him feedback. He's telling him what things he needs to be doing differently. Well, unfortunately, what I have seen in the past is that the guys just aren't maintaining that knowledge or information that they've been given. Their body yet isn't in a state of mind that is saying like, okay, I'm gonna take that feedback on board and I'm gonna apply it into my next interaction. All it is thinking about is that fight or flight. Am I gonna be safe if I go and talk to this stranger on the street or in this situation or that? And and so unfortunately, until you actually get yourself into that flow state, it can be very difficult to start uh, being more productive with your conversations or with just your social skills in general. Sadly, and you're not gonna like this, the cure for this is that you just have to throw yourself into more approaches until you can get yourself into that flow state. As soon as you start feeling more present, more grounded, more relaxed in every approach that you have, then that is where the body goes into this sort of state of mind of like, you know what, we're relaxed now, we're not in situations that could be life-threatening. We've just come out of that approach. Yep, I'm still alive, absolutely fine. Okay, right, now let's start absorbing this knowledge. Um, and that'll be usually when the moment, like if the coach says, right, I really liked what you said here, but I think you could take it a step up you know, and do this. Or, you know what, your body language or linguistics, you need to change your posture or change your vocal tonality and this and that. That is at that point where a guy will really start getting the results from a coach. When he's just overcome that stressful moment, he's in that flow state and he is now focusing on just the enjoyment and having fun with every person that he speaks with. He's not focusing on his anxiety. And of course, then what happens is you're gonna be able to ask questions, have opinions, thoughts, and whatnot. Your brain isn't going to be restrictive and you're gonna be able to bring out that charisma, that charm, and be a much more confident version of yourself. And obviously the byproduct of all of that, when you can keep your anxiety at a really low level or you can overcome it, is that you're gonna be able to build attraction with every person that you meet. And okay, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna have every person or every woman fall head over heels for you, but it does mean that people are gonna just see you in a much higher respect. They're gonna um, appreciate your confidence and your boldness more. Uh, not to say that people don't when you are really anxious, but there is something to be said that people really get to see this higher valued person coming over and striking a conversation with them. So I hope this was interesting for you. In fact, I'd actually, I'd love to hear your thoughts uh, on this in the comments below. You know, have you ever experienced anxiety? In fact, hell, it's a bit of a bit of a trick question really. But what did you do to overcome your anxiety? And even what's been the most stressful situation that you've been in where these symptoms that I've mentioned in this video have prevented you from being or reaching your full potential. So I'd love to hear that below. If you can like the video, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on more, uh, more unique anxiety content that I can offer you. And uh, I've obviously been that, that dating anxiety guy. And until the next time, uh, just, Keep your anxiety at bay and uh, and if you're still tucked in bed, take another hour. Uh, it's still really, really early. 